Well, good evening, folks. Welcome back to the farm. Thanks for joining me here this evening. You know what? To be honest, I don't feel that great today. And uh, yeah, it's a little bit just uh, kind of, you know, one of those days. But to top it all off, I have one of those uh, subjects that I got to talk about. The elephant in the room. Now, to start off with, we've received, you know, I would say in some cases it's maybe jokingly in some cases it's shockingly and in some cases it's with disdain the feedback from some people that they cannot believe that we name our food right and so we have a thing here on the farm specifically with the sheep uh we have a naming convention for them all the use they get you know old lady names it's just kind of a, a fun thing we do and the rams all get names from british you know, places in, in, in UK. Right. And it's just, it's just, it was works for us. And a lot of folks, they don't understand that. They're just like, well, like, why are you naming your food? You're going to get attached. Isn't that weird? You know, and that's kind of the lighthearted side of it. The, uh, the dark side of it is that people look at us as though we're just like cold hearted sons of bitches. Right. And that's, <laughs> that's not the case at all. The reality here on the farm is we don't, uh, we don't grow any commercial, protein that's not that's not what we do everything is, is you know all of our meats is custom you know every every lamb every you know chicken every pig every, anything that we're raising for protein is raised with a customer in mind right it so it's our goal here on the farm as with many other farms to give that animal the best possible life that it can have while it's here on the farm now keep that one in your pocket for later because we're going to come back and talk about that one. Anyways, so that's one thing that was really kind of chafing me here today. The other thing that was chafing me is, uh, I mean, it's no secret that we we recover a significant amount of food waste uh, from local grocery stores. It's on its way to a landfill. Uh, so there's there's uh, deli products like like meats, there's fruits and vegetables, a lot of which is imported because, I mean, it's January, it's northern Alberta. Let's face it, there's not too much in the greenhouse this time of year. Uh, and then there's a lot of baked goods as well that, that, that we are able to divert away from the landfill from, you know, basically decomposing into greenhouse gases because it's not able to, you know, live in an aerobic environment and compost properly. And it just goes, it just goes turns into methane and it's just overall it's pretty bad for the planet <laughs> now farmers get a bad rap already because you know beef and things like that and well any kind of ruminant contributes to greenhouse gas emissions and there's it's not just the animal itself but it's all the processes that go in to raising and producing that animal and then subsequently getting it from the, the producer to the consumer and all the like there's a lot of middlemen that's involved in that and one of those is really chafing me as well. Anyways, so what do the numbers shake out like when it comes to uh, how much we could get from a grocery store in a week? Well, you know, this week we got 200 pounds of fruits and vegetables. That's that's quite a bit. Considering 200 pounds of fruits and vegetables, is, let's be honest, the majority of which is imported. So it's got some pretty significant carbon miles on it. Then it's going to go 10 miles down the road to our local landfill and sit there and rot and off gas and contribute to you know <laughs> yeah like i really want a hole in an ozone layer because there's lettuce that got harvested in arizona that nobody wants to buy that seems to me to be a bit of an injustice but the other side of the coin is you know 175 pounds of meat some of which is processed in forms of ham and bacon things like that some of it is uh is cut meat so we're talking roasts, steaks, stew meat. Some of it is ground meat, like hamburger, essentially. But all of it is requires, you know, a significant amount of human process to get it from where, you know, the natural animal standing on four legs, living in a field, eating daisies, to, you know, sitting in a styrofoam tray in your fridge ready to consume. Now, what I have here on on my uh, my grandmother's fine china, guess what this is? This is a beef tenderloin steak. Beef tenderloin steak. Cost on this stuff, $40 a kilo. $40 a kilo for what I have right here in my hand. Now, what am I going to do with this piece of meat? 
I'm going to feed it to my dogs because, I mean, just, here's the thing. So the, this animal was processed, taken to a butcher shop, cut down. This cut was specifically packaged with uh, a couple of other pieces, put in a styrofoam tray and put in a, an, air, an open air chiller in a grocery store where it can sit for a grand total of five days before... Well, it doesn't look like this anymore. It gets thrown in the dumpster, which then ends up with a big truck comes, dumps it in, it hauls off to the landfill. Now, okay, well, there's, I mean, it's just, it's just one steak, right? I mean, it's just one steak. No, no, it's not. It's 175 pounds of steaks from a single source. Now, globally, there's 263 million tons of, is it million or billion? I'll have to look that one up. I think it's million tons of meat that's produced every year globally. Now of that, all that meat that gets produced, 20% of it, 20% of it gets, and then this is at the consumer level, 20% of it gets wasted. So either in retail stores or discarded out of your fridge at home. Now, Farmers get a bit of a flack. You know, oh, the price of meat is so high. The price of meat is so high. And you think you're never going to pass a poor farmer. Well, let me tell you, farmers have never been paid less. So, okay, well, maybe it's the grocery store. I mean, the grocery store throwing away 20% of their $40 a kilo steaks. Maybe they can adjust their price. Maybe they can change their change their purchasing and, and selling practices maybe a little bit. Maybe that could drive the price down about 20%. But between October 2020 and October 2021, the price of meat in the grocery store actually increased 20.1%. Now, where did this all happen? So the COVID-19 pandemic rips through the world. And uh, subsequently, you know, we have a system of reliance. Let's be honest, between, between producer and consumer, there's a whole bunch of middlemen, as I mentioned, right? So we have a current system right now that relies on largely monopolized uh, corporations in, in terms of packing processing facilities, right? They're basically the people that, that butcher, the, well, they, they slaughter the animal, they butcher the animal, and then they package the animal for sale. Or, or specific cuts that will then be broke down furthermore in, in local grocery stores. But regardless, everything's got to go through these packing plants for the most part. Now, the COVID-19 pandemic comes through, they have a massive labor shortage, or do they, do they, you know, do they suffer, you know, like everybody else does? No, they have a labor shortage, massive bottleneck at the packing plants, you know, per, consumer demand is high, we've got farmers with, you know, hogs and cattle literally lined up, you know, pigs 300 pounds can't get to the butcher, I mean, they should have been gone at 200, 250 but they're sitting there putting, I mean, you got to keep feeding them, right? You can't let them starve and know where to take them because you can't get them to the processing plants. Now, it'd be funny if, uh, well, it wouldn't be funny. Not funny, haha, -ha, like not funny like a clown, but funny, ironic. If uh, somehow this, this massive bottleneck that occurred in all these processing plants affected their bottom line somehow. And yet companies like Cargill actually boasted millions millions more in profit over 2020 and 2021 than they have in years past so again i think there's a little bit of injustice being done here so let's have a moment of honesty here now i mentioned earlier that i mean all of our animals that we grow the the intent here is to you know be ethical and humane in and make sure that Every animal that's raised here on the farm has the best possible upbringing you possibly can, right? Now, that's not just because, you know, the meat we raise goes to customers, but it's also because this is the same meat that we feed our own family, right? I'm out there at five o'clock in the morning dragging a chicken tractor across the yard so that my three-year-old daughter and my wife can have the best, the best possible nutrient-dense food that we can possibly grow and supply here on the farm. That's... That's what we want to do, right? It's a, it's, it's no small thing. Now, I don't think, in reality, the average consumer is is attached in. This, well, they're they're certainly not attached in the same way. But I, I, I think you know, not just dis, not just disattached, but we're talking completely disconnected 
from, you know, social responsibility for where their food comes from. Right. And that is that is a tragedy. So and, and why this is and why this really it just rubs me the wrong way. Is forty dollar a kilo of steak? Yeah, okay. There's a number attached to it. This is a great cut of meat. Oh, be honest, that's a beautiful cut of meat. I don't even eat this because big. Let's be honest, I can't afford this. But the thing, the thing with this piece of meat is that you know, to the to the person that's in the store that looks and passes it by, and to the uh, to the worker in the store at the end of the shift on a, on a whatever day of the week it is that they go through and they sort inventory that picks up this styrofoam tray and they put it in a, in a polyethylene bag and out it goes. What, what needs to, you know, when I say it's no small thing, what, what there needs to be is some understanding that this is not a process. There is there is a life here. So that's one of the challenging things we have here on the homestead. I mean, if you're going to homestead or you're going to farm or you're going to do anything, if you're not just some guy, there's there's going to have to be some understanding that as a human being, we require protein to survive. Now, I can't speak for everywhere in the world, but I can speak for right here in northern Alberta, where for six months of the year, we get, you know, eight hours of daylight and then the average median temperature for six months of the year is 20 degrees below zero, we're not growing a lot of tofu. That's just not happening, right? So the most efficient way that we can do that is beef, pork, and chicken. A little bit of lamb on the side, right? So I guess for I guess where 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 it really stings as a producer, you know, is to see all the hard work and the effort that goes in to raising a top quality cut of meat uh, just discarded. But moreover, moreover, you know, to the folks that think, oh, you know, your name and your animals, you're kind of a, that's kind of, you're just like a bit of a psychopath, right? No, there's a life attached to this piece of meat. This means something. This is more than me just getting up at five o'clock in the morning. We do butchering day on, you know, for chickens and, uh, I get up that morning and it's like any other morning. I get up, I do my chores, I drink my cup of tea. And at the end of that day, I've taken 75 to 100 lives. That's no small thing. And so it's no small thing to see something that you poured your heart and soul into go down the road to a landfill. Seems awfully wasteful, seems to be unjust. And in reality, I think as consumers, I think uh, I think you need to kind of gain a bit of traction and a bit of a voice and take back your your responsibility for where your food comes from. Some of which is in the form of growing a little bit of your own food, taking some ownership that way. Um, but also being conscientious about, you know, things like this sitting on the shelf in the store. And, uh, you know. If the average consumer didn't need to see this fresh cut of meat sitting out there, if they would be willing to buy a frozen piece of meat or buy buy a whole animal directly from a farmer and have it butchered, cut, wrapped, and frozen, this poor old Bessie cow here wouldn't get five days on a shelf and get sent to the dump. Anyways, that's my heart-wrenching rant for the day. I'm going to go drink myself a cup of tea. So I hope you have a fantastic evening and we'll see you tomorrow.